And the United States was faced with the question of how to deal with a rising China. The overwhelming consensus among both Democrats and Republicans was that the United States should concentrate on engaging China. And what this meant was we, the United States, should go to great lengths to integrate China into the international economy, integrate China into the existing international institutions, uh, mainly economic institutions, but not exclusively economic institutions. And in the end, China would not only get richer or more prosperous, but it would turn into a democracy. And once China was a democracy, it would never fight with the United States. There would be no intense security competition with the United States because a prosperous and democratic China would get along very well with a prosperous and democratic America. So this was the basic operating assumption regarding China that informed American policy in the 1990s and I would argue throughout the first 15 years of the 2000s. Uh, on the other side of this debate were people like me who argued that if China continued to rise economically, it would turn that economic might into military might, and it would try to dominate Asia the way the, the United States dominates the Western Hemisphere, uh, and that the United States would not tolerate uh, a China that was a hegemon in Asia. We'd go to great lengths to prevent that ha from happening. And the end result would be you'd get this intense security competition with a serious chance of war. But again, the conventional wisdom at the time was that this realist view that people like me put forth was wrongheaded. And that really what we had to do is engage China and help China grow economically and uh, integrated into institutions, and we would all live happily ever after. I think if you look at where we are in 2020, those people who were in favor of engaging China have proved wrong. Uh, in fact, what they have helped to do is create a potential peer competitor for the United States. Uh, we are in real trouble today, and I'm talking about the United States in the sense that we have moved from the unipolar moment where the United States was by far the most dominant power in the world uh, to a situation where we are facing two other great powers, Russia and China. We're now in a multipolar world, no longer in a unipolar world. And in that multipolar world, the key dyad is the US-China dyad. And, uh, if you look at relations between the Chinese and the Americans today, it seems quite clear to me uh, that we now are facing an intense security competition and a very dangerous one. And my argument is that going forward uh, from today, the situation is likely to get worse. It's not going to get better. That idea that we could make China prosperous and live happily ever after has been proved wrong. And there's no reason to think um, the situation is going to turn around in the decades ahead. Uh, my argument is that if China continues to rise uh, in the next 30 years, uh, similarly to the way it rose in the past 30 years, the trouble uh, only gets worse. This, of course, is all related to the uh, presidential election on November 3rd, in that lots of people are talking about what effect uh, a new president will have on this relationship and what will happen if Donald Trump is reelected. And at the end of my talk, uh, I want to address that issue. And the argument I'll make there, just to give you a sense of where I'm heading, uh, is that it doesn't make much difference uh, whether Joe Biden is in the White House or Donald Trump. Uh, we are doomed to have an intense security competition 